Hi and welcome to this vocabulary lesson. I'm Louisa and today we are going to talk about words related to cars and car technology. All of us use cars and have to deal with traffic on a daily basis. And Cambridge IELTS 15 has a passage called driverless cars. So we're going to look at some words from that text and I will also give you example sentences from the passage. You should remember that the vocabulary from this lesson might appear in any other topic discussion and in any other exam section, be it reading, listening, writing or speaking. So it will be useful for you for the whole exam preparation. So let's get started. The first word in today's lesson is automotive. Automotive is American pronunciation. And automotive, automotive is British pronunciation. It's an adjective and it means relating to cars and car production. It's a formal word that normally comes before nouns. For example, the automotive industry. In other words, the car industry. The store stocks automotive parts. This means that the store has a lot of car parts. The next word is automation. Automation. It's a noun and it means the use of machines and computers to do work that was previously done by people. In other words, um, automation is the process of using machines and computers which today do the work that people did before. For example, automation means the loss of many factory jobs. That is, because machines and computers are used in the factory, a lot of people have lost their jobs. Automation has helped to increase production. This means the production has been increased because of the use of machines and computers. To automate is the verb form, automate. In other words, it means to use machines and computers instead of people to do a job or a task. For example, the entire manufacturing process has been automated. This means that in this manufacturing process, everything is done by machines and computers and humans are not involved in this process. The factory is now fully automated. According to this sentence, no people take part in the factory processes. Automated is an adjective. Automated. Carried out by machines and computers without needing human control. For example, automated check-in machines are common in airports. This means that these check-in machines, um, they work without any human beings controlling them. Let's look at an example from a passage. The automotive sector is well used to adapting to automation in manufacturing. This sentence means that it's very common in automotive sector, that is in car sector, to use machines and computers in the manufacturing process. The next word is vehicle, vehicle. It's a formal word and it means a thing that is used for transporting people or goods from one place to another, such as a car or a lorry. In this picture, you can see many vehicles. You can see an ambulance car, a, just a private car, a bus, um, a boat, a scooter, and even a motorbike. So all of these are examples of vehicles. Motor vehicles, cars, buses, lorries, etc. That is vehicles that have an engine. The thieves escaped in a stolen vehicle. There has been an increase in the number of deaths from motor vehicle accidents. This means that the number of deaths um, that happened on the roads because of the vehicles that is because of the cars and other um, means of transport on the roads um, has increased. The government should impose tighter controls on vehicle emissions. This means that the government should be stricter about 
of vehicle emissions, that is about the gases which vehicles sent out into the atmosphere. Let's look at an example. A new challenge to vehicle production is now on the horizon. This means that there is a new problem in vehicle production which is coming soon. The next word is self-driving. Self-driving is an adjective and if a vehicle is self-driving it has the technology to drive itself without a person in control. It's a synonym for words such as driverless or autonomous. For example, the company is designing a self-driving car. A self-driving car means um, no human is needed to control it. A self-driving car must be able not only to follow lanes on a road, but also to react to other traffic. Let's look at an example in the passage. Since Google announced in 2010 that it had been trialing self-driving cars on the streets of California, progress in this field has quickly gathered pace. This means that in 2010, Google stated that it was designing and producing self-driving cars in California. And since then, there has been a lot of progress in this area. The next word is collide. Collide. If two people, vehicles, etc. collide, they crash into each other. You can see that in this picture, the blue car and the black car they have collided. If a person, vehicle, etc. collides with another or with something that is not moving, they crash into it. Now, if you imagine that this black car wasn't moving, so the blue car crashed into the black car. Or the blue car collided with the black car. Example. The two cars collided at the crossroads. It was predicted that a comet would collide with one of the planets. Collision. Collision. Collision is the noun form. An accident in which two vehicles or people crash into each other. Example. There was a collision between two trains. It means two trains collided, so there was a collision between them. The employee was injured in a collision with the machine. The car was in collision with a motorbike. The collision occurred at the traffic lights. Now an example from the passage. More than 90% of road collisions involve human error as a contributory factor. Automation may help reduce the incidence of this. According to this sentence, more than 90% of road accidents happen because of people's mistakes. And the use of technology can help uh, decrease the number of such accidents. Now let's look at the next word and it is mobility. Mobility is American pronunciation and mobility, mobility is British. It's an uncountable noun and it means the ability to move or travel around easily. Let's look at some examples. A private car gives a much greater degree of comfort and mobility. This means that if you have a private car, you have more comfort and you are able to move and travel around more easily. Shuttles will give mobility to employees without cars. I prefer the mobility of a handheld camera. This means that I like this camera more because it, I'm able to move it around more easily. The adjective form is mobile. Mobile is American and mobile is British pronunciation. Mobile is an adjective that means that is not fixed in one place. For instance, mobile equipment, or a mobile clinic, a mobile shop, a mobile library. If a library is mobile, it means it is contained inside a vehicle and it can distribute books in places where it goes. 
Let's look at an example from the passage. If the vehicle can do the driving, those who are challenged by existing mobility models, such as older and disabled travelers, may be able to enjoy significantly greater travel autonomy. What this sentence is trying to tell us is that if a vehicle can drive itself, that is, if this vehicle is a driverless automated vehicle, people who cannot use the existing mobili mobility models such as buses or trains or cars, and those are normally older and disabled travelers, they will be able to travel more independently if they use these kinds of cars. The next word is mileage. Mileage is a noun and it means the distance that a vehicle has traveled measured in miles. And as a reminder, one mile equals uh, 1,609 meters. An example sentence, there was no record of the mileage the car had done. This means that there was no record of how many miles or how many kilometers the car had traveled. My annual mileage is about 8,000. This means that I normally travel about 8,000 miles every year. The employees get a mileage allowance if they use their cars for work. That is, if employees use their cars for work, they get an amount of money paid for each mile they travel. And a passage example. Automated vehicles might reduce vehicle ownership by 43%, but vehicles average mileage would double as a result. According to this sentence, automated vehicles, that is vehicles which are not driven by people, which do not need human control, um, will be owned by fewer people. So not many people will own such automated vehicles. But the vehicle's average mileage would double. That means how far the cars will go, that is the mileage of the cars, the distance they will travel, will double as a result. The next word is unoccupied. Unoccupied is an adjective and it means empty with nobody living there or using it. For example, an unoccupied house. So there is no one living in an unoccupied house. You can take a seat at the unoccupied table. That is, you can sit down at the table where nobody is sitting. The opposite or the antonym of the word is occupied. Occupied is an adjective and it means being used by somebody. For example, the most densely occupied areas of the country. That is, the areas of the country where there are a lot of people. Only half of the rooms are occupied at the moment. Only half of the rooms um, have people living in them at the moment. The verb form is occupy. Occupy means to fill or use a space, an area, or an amount of time. For example, as the company grew, it continued to occupy more space. In other words, as the company grew, it got larger, so it had to fill, it had to use a larger area. Studying occupies half of my time. Um, in other words, I spend half of my time studying. Occupation is the noun form. Occupation is an uncountable and formal noun and it means the act of living in or using a building, room, piece of land, etc. Example, the new rule will not affect tenants in occupation. In other words, the new rule will not um, be used for those who are already living in the building. The houses were judged to be unfit for human occupation. That means um, humans or people um, could not live in those houses. And an example from the passage. Since for most of the time, most of the seats in most cars are unoccupied, 
This may boost production of a smaller, more efficient range of vehicles. Uh, according to this sentence, most, most of the time, um, a lot of the places, a lot of the seats in the car are empty, and this may lead to an increase in the production of smaller cars. And the next word is reliable. Reliable is an adjective and it means able to work or operate for long periods without breaking down or needing attention. For example, the machine has a highly reliable control system. This means that the system, the control system of this car, or I mean of this machine, can work uh, for long periods of time and it doesn't need a lot of attention. It doesn't break easily. People are often willing to pay a premium for familiar reliable services. Reliable service means it doesn't, um, dis it's not disrupted very often. It can continue working for a long time without the need of people to correct it. Reliably is an adverb and reliability is the noun form. Reliability is the American pronunciation and reliability is British. Reliability shows how well a machine, a piece of equipment or system works. Example, German vehicle manufacturers have built up a reputation for reliability. In other words, everyone knows that German vehicle manufacturers um, have reliable cars, they produce reliable cars that work for a long time and do not need to be repaired very often. To most users, the reliability of the company's products is far more valuable than their design. In other words, for, um, for users, it's not, um, the design is not so important. It's more important that the company's product work for a long time. They are durable, they do not break easily. Manufacturers are looking at ways of improving the car's reliability. That is, they want their cars to work longer periods and that their cars do not need to be repaired very often. And now the passage example. There are a number of hurdles to overcome in delivering automated vehicles to our roads. These include technical difficulties in ensuring that the vehicle works reliably in the infinite range of traffic. Now let's look at these two sentences separately. According to the first one, there are a number of problems in delivering driverless cars to our roads. So it's not easy to deliver automated vehicles to roads. And there are some te technical difficulties in that because it's not easy to um, make a vehicle work, um, work well, work, work properly in traffic. And finally, we've got the word operate. Operate, um, one meaning of this verb is to work in a particular way. For example, most domestic freezers operate at below minus 18 degrees Celsius. Mind that in this meaning, um, the word operate is often followed by an adverb or preposition. And in this particular example, it's followed by the preposition at. So most domestic freezers uh, work at this kind of temperature. Another example, solar panels can only operate in sunlight, which means they can only work in sunlight. And once again, the word operate is followed by the preposition in, operate in sunlight. Another meaning is to use or control a machine or make it work. For example, the machinery is easy to operate. That is, this machinery is easy to make it work, it's easy to control. They use a remotely operated camera. That is, they use a camera that can be con controlled remotely. So you don't have to stand close to the camera in order to control it. The doors can be manually operated in the event of fire. This means that if there's a fire, if in case in case of fire, the doors can be used uh, or controlled by hand. Operation is the noun form. Operation 
is the way that parts of a machine or system work. The process of making something work. That's kind of the second meaning of this word. So it's not just the way it works, but it's also the process of making something work. For example, operation of the device is extremely simple. That is, making this device work is extremely simple. So it's easy to control it. It's simple to control it. Competition is central to the operation of markets. That is, for the markets to work, it's very important for competition to be present. And the example, when drivers are no longer essential for vehicle operation. According to this phrase, um, we're talking about the time when drivers will not be needed for, for vehicles to work. I hope the explanation was clear. I would strongly recommend that you download the PDF file that goes with this video and read the full passage. Also, try to do the questions that follow the passage. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you in the next video.